You know, spirituality and medicine, oftentimes those two things seem to not go hand in hand. I get it. Those of you that know me know that I've spent times in hospitals, both as a parent of a patient uh, and obviously through my job, lots of times in hospitals. It can be a tough place. So where do you go for spirituality? And it's hard because this is another one of those topics that people don't talk about. Today I'm going to bring on my guest, Dr. Casey. She's becoming a good friend of mine. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but mostly we're going to talk about spirituality and medicine and how those two things can intercede if possible on today's edition of Travel Evolved. It's Travel Evolved. I'm Mark Holloway. Welcome, everyone, to the show, to the episode. Welcome today. I don't even know. Whatever you want to say. Welcome. How's that sound? Uh, you know, this is one of those topics that I, I want to cover because, and I know you may think, well, this is, may not be for me. Listen to this. I, I cannot wait for you guys to meet my guest. Uh, she and I have talked, and, and um, just really a fascinating guest. I'm excited to have her on. So I wanted to do this episode because I think it's an important one to kind of round out the things that we do on Travel Evolved. And one of those topics that, again, is never discussed. No one wants to talk about religion because it puts some people out. Or it's, it's controversial or it could be, you know, I don't know if everyone's going to like us. So most people that are on this side of our business don't even want to talk about this sort of thing. And I believe, like everything, the more we talk about things, the more we understand each other, the more the industry evolves and becomes better. And that was exactly why Dr. Casey and I started talking. And we had a whole list of things that we wanted to go over. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure that she comes on again because in talking with her, first of all, we hit it off really well. She just has a great mind and I, and I really like her. So I wanted to have her on in multiple times, if, if possible. I've said that about a lot of guests. Uh, but she just has a, a way about her, the things that she and I can talk about. And she's not uh, scared or she's totally willing to talk about things that maybe are tough for some people to talk about, especially right now. And that's what we, we talked about privately is that how crazy our society is right now that we can't openly talk about things that we should as humans, as Americans, as people in this world, for those of you that listen to me internationally, should be talking about. Right now, more than ever, we should be talking about these sorts of things. And spirituality and religion, I think, is almost at the top of that list. So when I saw her credentials, I'm like, oh, i got to get her on there. And of course, then the, the conversation took off from there. So uh, for the first time today, I'm hoping more than once, we're going to have Dr. Casey join us here in a minute. You know, she's an ordained minister, um, which is one of the reasons I went around here. But more importantly, she hosts um, a, a, a podcast and a, and a, and a TV Network, and I'll ask her more about that. That's called Speaking Freedom and Speaking Freedom Radio. And they're going to put some things up to show you. Again, if you haven't, if you're looking for some other new podcasts and other people to listen to, to kind of round out your, you know, not just listening to travel nurses and travel allied professionals and people like me, get a little more well rounded. I, I can't recommend her stuff enough. I've listened to a few episodes, really good stuff. So um, we're going to put a little plug in there for her and during. Um, but I want to talk a lot today about this concept of. I guess religion and the things that you guys are dealing with, many of you, uh, especially right now on a daily basis. We've had guests on um, that have talked about how tough it is to work in a facility, in a hospital. And I think you guys all know this. So maybe this episode is, is more for, you know, to have some, to open the eyes of some other recruiters, some people in my position. But I really think it's a good place to start the conversation, as I always like to do, with travelers themselves. How do I breach the subject of wanting to believe what I believe and seeing such horrible things that happen or, or not understanding why the world is the way it is? How do I seek out my spirituality? How do I find things 
and discover and, and evolve and become a better human as we have talked about on I think we did the episode of, of, of you know being a, a good human it is this stuff's important and here's another one of those episodes I think that again I'm hoping if you're driving to your assignment or you've downloaded these and you're you know you're, you're in between shifts and you've got some downtime this is one of those episodes I hope that kind of helps mold you and um, again just just having the conversation is what I really want to do on these things. That's my whole goal, mostly. It's certainly not to you know throw any wisdom at you because I don't have that much, especially when it comes to things like this that I'm really ignorant and, and flopping around myself with, right? So uh, it's fun to talk to somebody that has uh, talks about this frequently in, in his or her profession and in, in their daily basis. So it, it kind of helps those of us that don't ground ourselves and become a little bit, I think, more entrenched into... The spirituality of being a human. And that's, again, some of the things I want to talk to Dr. Casey about. So let's get her on because I know that we've got um, a lot that I want to go over. And, and knowing her and I, we will probably go everywhere. So I'm going to pull her up. I'm going to get rid of this mic, put on this new mic because she is waiting. I see her. Hello there. I'm going to get her on here right now. So hang tight. Hey, Dr. Casey, how are you? Hey, Mark, how you doing? <laughs> We've been having some issues technology-wise on my end, that's for sure. But uh, good to, to see you. Thanks for joining me. Nice to Thanks see you again. Me. Absolutely. Um, I don't even know where to start with you. You you and I talked before, and, and obviously it was kind of funny because we came up with so many different things that you and I want to talk about. So we've narrowed it down to this today. But obviously, with your experience, your background, there's just I mean, there really is a lot of things that that you can help with my audience and and so we'll we'll address that later on as we talk but um, first of all you're an ordained minister um, you're a published author um, with the it's my time a book you're a certified life coach uh, obviously you're the host of speaking freedom radio which is is that just on on iheart I radio is it everywhere well actually um, it's everywhere and I've actually incorporated that into speaking freedom TV so now it's also on YouTube as well as I have my own Roku channel that people can go if they have a Roku TV or a Roku device they can actually go download my channel and watch all of the videos um, and I've used just uh, different visuals for background but I know that um, for myself I like to turn things on and I might be moving around the house while it's going so right. I tried to make it very convenient for people to listen yeah, and it, it's weird. Some people like to just listen on podcasts. We like to watch. I know one of my, some of my podcasts are actually allowing us to do video, like almost a YouTube on it nowadays. So <clears throat> technology is just getting stronger and stronger. But you're, you obviously have a lot, of, a lot of background. You're, you're good at this. You're much more professional than I am. I'm still learning how to do this whole social media thing. But today, I really want to jump into, you know, the topic you and I talked about, and that really is, you know, spirituality mixed with medicine in uh, an environment that oftentimes is a tough environment to work in. And I wanted to lean on you a little bit to kind of have you, I guess, just have an open conversation about what it must be like with, you know, both of us, neither one of us are medical professionals in a hospital setting, um, what it must be like to be working in and around what I, all I can describe of is some tough situations, you know, day in and day out. So I thought we'd open it up and, and just kind of, let's just, I guess, first talk about that philosophy of you are a spiritual person or you're looking to become a spiritual person and yet you're dealing with heavy oftentimes heavy stuff day in day out well generally we all deal with heavy things some of us have a way of avoiding it or letting it fall to the back of our minds so that we can persist every day however normally life in general is tough and it's hard and it's the reason why we have religion and the reason why we all seek a higher guidance in life. So um, having nurses in my family, uh, it has really been a eye opener because it allows me to understand what it's like in the field of being a nurse. And especially during this pandemic where it's difficult to have to go to work every day knowing that you are putting yourself in harm's way and actually risking your family coming home with COVID possibly or any other things. And then the portion of it where you see death regularly, it right. definitely has to weigh on your soul because as a person who is a spiritualist and I really do um, try to tap into people a lot, 
I consider myself an empath, not because it's the hip thing to say right now or it's a viral catchphrase, but yeah. because literally I feel other people's emotions. So if I'm talking to you and you're going through and you're crying about something, I'm emotional and I'm crying as though it's happening to me. And yeah. that in itself made me a little bit more compassionate to others, but it also allowed me to understand spirituality in the way that I do now. So it's tough um, in the medical field and outside of the medical field, but it's an extra pressure because you have accepted the calling to care for other people because being a doctor, being a nurse, being a medical professional, is a calling you have to love it in your soul is i mean right. a lot of people get it for the money but it, it it doesn't stick it doesn't it's not as meaningful if you don't do it from your soul so um it's a part of your spiritual background for most people yeah you touched on something real quick i want to jump back a little bit because it's really interesting you, you said that because i when you're talking about putting yourself in people's position I, I think there's a thing that does happen to healthcare providers. We had a guest on a few weeks ago that, that kind of even talked about this, that after a while, sometimes that that emotion disconnect starts to happen with, with a nurse, let's say, or, or even to somebody who's doing scans and seeing some really yucky stuff that you're not supposed to see and very scary looking things. Um, throughout the facility, you've said that you've kind of gotten to a point where you, you and I are connecting, right? If I was having a tough day and you and I were calling, I was talking to you and I'm upset, you're going to get upset too. Isn't it interesting? Do you think it is because of just our society, technology, I don't know if it's social media, the fact that we've been so, um, I guess, uh, distanced from each other in the last few years that people seem to be a little less, dis more, or I should say, more disconnected with, with each other, when, especially emotionally? I think that social media definitely plays a part in it because people oftentimes use social media to compare and contrast success um, health, life, just everything in general. So it makes people feel more disconnected because you have a simple connection. So now you're not calling people as much. You're not checking in. You're just using social media as the fix it for not addressing things um, more so personally. So instead of me calling the aunt or a cousin, I can just look on their Instagram. I can look on their Facebook and you know, I know that they're okay. So it, it doesn't make me need to, Hey, pick up the right. phone. How are you doing? Because people post a lot of cute pictures and they, they are really actually going through a lot more than what they will admit. And it's easy because of social media to make all of your highlights the best of your life and you could be sure. at home literally going through and that's why we see so many people committing suicide and self-harm because they look a part that they can't live up to so as a life coach my goal is to help people to live up to their fullest potential to see what god sees in them and help them to see it as well well you said a lot there <laughs> it was a whole bunch of things that were the fact that we project the best of our lives to everybody else when they are trying to compare that, so everybody does it, which you're, I mean, you're right. The fact that you're, you don't feel like you need to call your aunt or your, your parent or your son or daughter because you can see what's going on. There's that unfortunate lack of communication. Um, I, there was about three other things you said that I probably like to circle back around. And really interesting. So, I mean, yes, definitely I think the disconnect social media has been there. And I think for, for people in hospital, getting back to that spirituality thing, it feels kind of like, it's almost like a healthcare provider has to make a conscious decision to be aware of that potential disconnect with their spirituality, with their actual patient, the person that they're giving care to, and remember that, yes, they've got to, they've got to be somewhat robotic and, and, do, and diligent in what they're doing, but at the same time, we're all still human, and we need that, we need that, uh, that care and that love and that things that you know so it's it's a good reminder for people out there that boy you just can't you can't we can't let go of that in a, in a hospital setting for sure i was um on a live on instagram the other day and i heard a physician that i am familiar with talk about how when you become a doctor you kind of have to shut down or place a wall with personal life because if you begin to have a personal life, it can distract you from your work life, which is supposed to be precedent over everything else. Now, 
I'm not sure if that is true for everybody, but coincidentally, later on that night, I was watching House. I know it's a show, but I loved it when it's uh, <laughs> when it was on. And he said the exact same thing. I believe it was when he was dating Cuddy, and he was um, not saving as many people because he was in a relationship. And he sp- spoke specifically that when you become a doctor, and it was the same thing that the real doctor said, you have to disconnect um, your feelings and your emotions and kind of have two separate lives but your doctor mm-hmm. life is more of your life because it's an on call 24 7 thing you can't just stop being a doctor because you have a family but you can always turn off your family life and be a doctor and a lot of people um, work or workaholics they use work as a defense mechanism to facing life. So a lot of times it's easy to dive into work versus addressing emotional, spiritual things that are going on that you really need to fix so that you can have a better work life. It it is, I guess the only point, it's just a shame because you're right, I mean, I can understand that philosophy. You have to, um, you've got to have a wall up there because you you have to protect yourself emotionally, mentally from getting too close. regardless of whether it's you know something serious or, or just in your day-to-day but same token you're also trying not to to stop being that that human element that made you want to become a nurse a doctor a, an allied health professional really really kind of, kind of wild i mean if you really think about it how does somebody who let's say you know someone is looking for maybe a little bit more spirituality a little bit more god a little bit more religion in their life how does somebody who is around that environment that says to themselves, and I'm hoping we're reaching a listener too, that says, you know, I could use a little more God in my life today. You know, how do they, how do they find that when, when they're in, in an environment like, like that all, all the time? Personally, uh, I would suggest to um, find a way to take a step back from the workload, even if you're in that environment, and pray. Pray to yourself, like, I am not a religious person. I I was a Christian for about six plus years. And um, in the midst of me getting divorced and learning psychology, it started uncovering a lot of the um, mind games of religion because most churches are business before they are spiritual house. And so... Now, that will ruffle some people's feathers, so okay. I will keep that okay. light. Um, <laughs> however, fine. the goal let's is Let's stop for to... a minute. They, they, they can't ignore that fact. I mean, let's be honest. No matter what you believe, unfortunately, God has become a profitable situation. For most, I mean, actually, a lot of people you, you become... And I can a lot of people become preachers and spiritual leaders because it's the easiest thing to do. Um, people get out of jail. People... Sometimes it's passed down through family and heritage but it's tradition more than relationships so it's i need to run this business i need to get these numbers i need to get this offering in versus what can i do to help the people so i am not trying to deter people from religion i believe that religion definitely has its place i believe that if you are totally um unknowledgeable about God I believe that religion can help to introduce you to God but I believe that it is very important to keep and maintain your own personal relationship with God so that your spiritual leader doesn't become the middleman because the goal is to become more like Christ not necessarily Jesus we don't want to die and get crucified like Jesus for the sake thereof because religion we want right. to take on the mind of Christ, which is love, compassion, um, being able to understand and our, accept ourselves. A lot of people, um, unfortunately, have been raised to doubt themselves, to question their own um, thoughts, their own choices, to lean not to their own understanding. But the the actuality is that you have to begin to accept who you are so that you can be whole, so that you can feel secure in yourself, so that you don't settle for less, so that you're not using work as a crutch versus saying, okay, I can sit at home and I can sit in my own thoughts and not feel like I want to jump off the bridge. Um, Because Mm -hmm. a lot of people, what 
hindered a lot of people during this pandemic is that they've been practicing survival for a very long time. So now instead of being able to sit at home in 14 day quarantine, two month quarantine, a year of sitting at home, instead of being able to sit at home and be at peace with their thoughts, they are trying to find something to fill a void, but the void filler is within. I mean, and the more you pray and examine yourself, um, kind of like when you go to the doctor and they, they do a full physical, they check you from head to toe. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to do that spiritually. And that's understanding why you think the way you do and how you came to that. And then asking God to show you spiritually where you need to go and what you need to do to progress forward. But the first start is prayer and self-acceptance because you are who you are. I don't care how much cosmetic surgery you can get. (laughs) I don't care how much um, hair extensions or makeup you put on. When you take it all off, you still have to live with you, even with plastic implants and things in that nature. At the end of the day, you can do all of that, but you still have to deal with the person that didn't like themselves before. So it's really self-acceptance and um, prayer, understanding, wanting to grow spiritually, and then picking up books that can help with that. I think my guests are realizing why I wanted to have you on so bad right now. Because every time you say something, there's a, there's just a list of things that I'm like, wow, I could go off on that. Because just unique brain you have. You have a wonderfully beautiful unique brain that really does. I mean, you really think about things. I think in a in a, in a great way. I've had a lot of coaches on. I've had a lot of people on. I got that that are you know life coach. But you're you have a different a pragmatic, I guess, way of looking at things. I mean, obviously, like you said, I mean. It can't hurt us to follow in the teachings of Christ. I mean, last time I checked, there's nothing really that can harm you uh, if taken in moderation, if that is what you're trying to emulate. I mean, somebody out there, please tell us that we're wrong, that that, that, that can be a bad thing. Because the teachings are all about being a good human, which I've done podcasts, I've done episodes on that. People really are struggling for that. I even mentioned a couple weeks ago, I see people in my gym that say, be a good person. And we have to put that on T-shirts now to remind people to be a good person, which is insane, but that's, you're right, that's the world we're living in. And I love the idea of really doing some introspection, and we've had an opportunity to do that, and you said it, a lot of people chose to not use that time to really do some self-evaluation, but you are who you are, why not accept those, who you are, good and bad, and work on, good, the, work and on look, the bad. The bad has, like, I used to be like, oh, I have an attitude, I hate my attitude. <laughs> But when you get into business, you need a little bit of attitude. You have to have a little bit of toughness. Um, And I may be called a B-I-T-C-H or something, (laughs) you know, for it. But I'm okay with that because either I get pushed over or I stand up for myself. And I refuse at 39 to be pushed over anymore. There was a long time that I would just, whatever they would say, whoever would tell me whatever, I would just, okay, because I don't want to be a bitch or be a problem or you know (laughs) and as you get older you just care a little bit less about what other people think because when you muffle your voice when you muzzle the ox you really 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 hinder yourself you take away your confidence you take away your ability to um just not allow bad things to happen to you because people will think oh if i tell her this or if i tell him this they'll go for it but when you take a stand and you know what you stand for you start figuring out your purpose because you're accepting yourself so now you're understanding well the reason why i'm like this or these things came from this and this is how i can use it to my advantage now um i developed spiritual human behavior um a book that is really um a new area of psychology honestly because i began to figure out okay when did I start acting like this? What happened in life that made me, you know, make this adjustment to survive, to protect myself as a defense mechanism? And when I started breaking down those things, it really, it seemed like it blossomed and birthed my purpose because it was like, okay, then it was like, this is something that I noticed as a pattern. Let me see if I notice it in other people. And I began to notice that it was not just me 
this is literally the patterns of behavior and this is how um, life experiences and your environment affects your spiritual nature which then affects your behavior patterns so my spiritual human behavior book breaks down how to cut through your defense mechanisms how to understand yourself and become whole and to seek purpose and get on the path to success spiritual success because if you work on your soul honestly then everything else will be better Again, fascinating. I think that's right. It's amazing. And I'll tell you, I'm much older than you are. It gets better. There is something about age. And, you know, they always say respect your elders. But I'm, I'm saying that time, I think, makes you better and better as a human because you start to you start to care less, like you're saying, about the superficial things, people's opinion. I mean, I'm not saying you don't walk around and be a you-know-what, but, I mean, you really do. You're, you're more like, okay, this is who I am. Let me embrace the good stuff. Yeah, I know I've got some things i got to work on, and I'll work on those. And that's that's how you evolve as a human. But to not worry, I mean, it just, you become, I don't know if it's a confidence or you just come into your own and you start to realize. And so do the people you hang out with that are your own age. So you're gonna, it's going to get better and better for you. <laughs> uh, well, I have, um, I joined the military when I was 17. And um, that set me ahead of the game a lot for my peers because I had to be an adult. Not only did I have to be an adult, by the time I was 20, I was in war and coming back home. I turned 21 actually in Iraq. So, you know, it is um, I've had a lot of life experience that really shaped me into I really every day I'm like, oh, my God, I really like the way I think. I listen to some of my old my videos because a lot of the things that I'm uploading to Speaking Freedom TV and Speaking Freedom Radio are from last year when I started doing these videos. And I, I just listen to myself like, wow, I really like the way I think. Like, And I'm like, I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's really pretty good. It's okay. It's okay, right? That's the way, that's the way it should be. I mean, I, I think that's that's part of it. Okay, so you you said you know you're we're, and I think I agree with you. Um, I discovered God you know with a tough situation I had in life uh, a decade and a half ago, and it was very helpful for me and it got me through the toughest period of my time in my life uh, with my kid and my child and my wife and our family and it was it was for me it was a it was I never has to have that not been a non-religious person I just didn't have the intelligence and I always said I don't know I don't know what, what and I don't think any of us do by the way it's not like I'm unique. But I, but I accepted that fact that I don't know, but I'm certainly not going to ixnay or poo-poo any idea that's within reason. And I, and I did. I discovered, I discovered God, and I discovered uh, prayer and the things that got me through. And I, and I do, I struggle today to put myself back in those positions to say, don't just be that way when you need mm-hmm. that, that spirituality. Try to be that way all the time. And I think all of us struggle with that when things are going great. We're not reaching out oftentimes and thanking, we, you know, we, but when we need something, boy, we are on our knees in a second, right? That's just the way humans are. That's the way we were, we were made probably. Because I agree with you on the religion, of the, on, the, on the institution, if you will, of a church, and you and I may be unique in that, and we didn't even know that we agreed about it. We didn't agree about it so much when we were talking. This is another thing. How, did, how would you recommend somebody who is seeking spirituality or wants to continue or is on the road traveling, again, going to a new facility every three months, potentially, different part of the country, uh, different, you know, you got, you got where you are, by the way, you're in Atlanta, so you got the, you know, the, the, the southern, you know, type of church, you're going out to the Pacific Northwest. Any suggestions on, on I mean, besides your fan, phenomenal podcast and your things you're doing, where else can people find some good avenues to seek out some spirituality, some religion, some ways to improve and evolve themselves? I listen to a lot of audiobooks that um, are mostly psychology and religious uh, or, yeah, surrounded by religion because everything that we know and hear about Christ and Jesus, Christ is the title for the anointing. I like to point this out because people um, oftentimes couple Jesus Christ like that was his name. And Christ, literally, if you define it, is the title for the anointing. So, um, understanding Christ, if you understand that Christ is the anointing and you get some books about, um, church, you can get books about church religion. You can even read the Bible. I am not against the Bible. I just think that you have to read it from an understanding of, um, the time period that it was written in. 
um, understand the translations that it come from. So for myself, I like to look up a lot of words in the Bible. Um, even when I'm listening to songs and they say something, let me hold on before I sing that lyric. Let me make sure <laughs> it means something that I need to be singing over my life. Um, so <laughs> I am um, into manifesting and um, creating vision boards and finding um, a foundation your foundation for Christ, no matter how much you believe in God or religion, it really starts with you because you are the foundation for which that religion sits in. So if you don't believe, then the religion won't work anyways. Just like if you don't right. believe, then Christ won't work. So it all rests on you. You have to, once you believe, once you confess, once you do all those things, even if you read the books, even if you seek out spirituality, once I speak to you, you still have to do. You still have to exercise what you're saying that you believe in order for it to really um, manifest into your life. And that just means for it to blossom and grow and take root into your life. You have to make the next step. So if you pray and God sends you uh sends you confirmation through whichever way God speaks to you to go and travel, then God will also give you the next steps. A lot of times we don't recognize that everything in the universe is a sign from God. It is, we are, it's not like the earth, then people or animals and then trees. Like, you know, a lot of times um, vegans say that you should eat, plants they you know you're killing animals but plants are alive as well so it's kind of like you know one of those potato potato type of things <laughs> but when you look at it like this like um with numerology and spirituality i if i see a red bird and i'm thinking about something the red bird to me is like okay whatever it is that i was thinking about i am not off i am not wrong God, because in order for me to encounter that red bird at that time i had to leave my house at a certain time to be right in that place when that bird passed because i could have stayed at home i could have been delayed or anything it's just like even when you are traveling and it may be an accident and you thought you were running late and oh I'm hurrying I'm hurrying and your lateness caused you to miss being a part of an accident that could have been fatal so sometimes um we often look for signs and we don't recognize that God is always sending us signs he's always giving us direction and feeding us on how to proceed so that we can become the best that we were created to be yeah, I mean, a couple of things. I The other day I was running, I had to go back to my house. I was leaving my house to go. I had to go back because I forgot something. Bad accident up in the corner, right, you know, suburbs, but right up there, bad accident. I always, I thought, could have been me if that was, you know, if I didn't go back. The world is always giving you, I guess, opportunities. Um, and I say this a lot, and, and I did this a lot with my staff. I talk a lot about hard lessons. I talk about how it's really difficult when you're facing a tough period of time to be thankful for the lesson that you're being given and shown and to recognize it's a lesson and not to, you know, to say, listen, I'm, I've got, trust me, I've gone through some tough stuff. I'm sure you have too. You can't, you're a veteran, so there you <laughs> already know. Those lessons are opportunities, in my opinion, to say, how do I, how do I improve? What do I learn from this? And it's really hard to, to be grateful for the toughest times in your life, but I can attest, like I said, I'm older than you, that those are the times when change seems to be the greatest. When things are going great, you don't really change and become something that you weren't yesterday. But when you have to experience something tough, and those are the people that are out there listening to you and I that are experiencing some tough stuff right now, this is maybe your opportunity for your greatest change. Well, uh, there is a blessing in every lesson, but we have to be willing to face the lesson to even see the blessing. A lot of people... Um, get caught up in the forgive and forget uh, the act like it never happened I I, I kind of call it Christian denial because it, it is more prevalent there because sure. people believe that it, when you, as soon as you go to religion then everything bad is just washed away you just act like it never happened and that's the worst thing that you can do because if you act like it never happened then it's easy to get caught up in the same type of situation 
over and over again that's how we end up cycling through situations people circumstances jobs that mimic things that we were praying our way out of instead of saying okay how did i get in this situation and what can i learn from the things that happen whether it is for myself um, when i got divorced it was like okay after I experienced this, I never want to experience again. So what was it that I overlooked? What red flags did I not pay attention to that got me in this situation? Because if I have to experience something bad in life, I don't want to do the same thing all over again and keep doing right. the same thing. Right. Or if I date somebody that has bad habits, I don't want to dump him and then start dating somebody that's similar to him, but he just look a little bit different. And a lot of times we just change out. It's like playing Uno and you, you know, you just reversing the thing instead of actually saying, okay, when this happened, this is how it changed me, especially getting out of relationships. Cause a lot of people use relationships as a defense mechanism and they'll jump from relationship to relationship and they never say, okay, now what didn't work in that relationship? Even what did I like in that relationship? Because it all holds value. If you can say, okay, this situation, when I was 17, my mom literally tried to kill me. I'm talking about banging my head on the ground, tried to kill me. Wow. And what I learned from that situation over the years was it wasn't me that was the problem. And when I found out that she were, was um, not sober, it, it may not have been totally her, but in order to address the, situ the situation and learn to live and deal with my mom, I had to evaluate over time, okay, if this is the person that she is, then this is how I need to approach this relationship in order to maintain my peace. Because at the end of the day, you have to be able to find peace in your past, your present, and then use all of those things to build your future. That's that's a lot of stuff there. So have you for you for you have forgiven her? None of my business. But I'm <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. So I forgave her after it happened. Um, for whatever reason, I am, I've never really been the type of person to hold on to things. Now, I am. We are not close um, as most mother and daughters are. However. Um, over the, I mean, and I've talked, stopped talking to her for years at a time because she is a, a some a little bit narcissistic and um, has an abusive tendency. But it's because of how she was raised. I'm sure all of those things really affect us more than what we want to realize. Right. Um, our parents yelling at us, fussing at us, and not encouraging us in the things that we do well, young, because they see something else for us. Um, all of those things affect us. So I had to take time to understand that if I'm going to have a relationship with my mother, it, I can't really look at her like a mom because mm. as a mom, I want certain things. I think I'm supposed yeah. to talk to my mom all the time. I should be able to call her. She should be there for me, yeah. you know. And what I learned is that I can't expect from her what she's already proven that she cannot provide. So I just That's have healthy, to, though. you know, take it for what it is. And yeah. um, I love her. Um, I don't have as much parental respect for her as I once did or wanted to have because the several ways that she's dropped the ball even since um, I was 17. But, yeah. yeah, I speak to her. I actually talked to her yesterday. I talk to her often. Um, I don't hold any grudges. I oftentimes, um, if anything, I feel bad for her because yeah. I just sometimes wonder, like, what would have happened if I would have died that day? She would have been in jail somewhere or right. dealing with that guilt. But even well, the She's missing out on a great person. I, I can tell her that. So if I could go and call her up and give her a piece of my mind, I guess she's missed out on it with you. Well, uh, if, here's a if real... she... If she wouldn't have done that, I probably wouldn't have be here because after that, I ended up joining the Army. I ended up wanting to be a better person. I'm a better parent now because yeah. I try to do everything that my mother didn't do for me, for my mm -hmm. children. That, that was what I learned. And I realized that either you become exactly like what you were raised by or you become completely opposite in each area of your life. So you can choose 
And then you can choose balance, too. You may see some things like everybody in your life, whether they treated you good or bad, you can learn something. You may see yes. some good things in bad people, and those bad things may hold more weight than the people that were perfect. <laughs> yeah, they ain't never yeah. have a mistake. They ain't never did nothing wrong. You only see them do perfect things. And then, but you don't find a balance of what not to do also. So sometimes you learn from the people that weren't bad. I used to think that, man, I would have rather, I knew people that mother was on drugs or alcoholics and they were yeah. present, like always there. But my mother worked at GM. She was a workaholic. And um, I used to be like, oh, if I had a mom, I would rather have a mother that was on drugs and a present than to have a mother that was a workaholic and, you know, seemed like she was perfect. Because the people that had their parents present have closer relationships than the people that was providing very well. Yeah, you, that's right. You're, you're, you're originally from Ohio. Further north. Ohio, <laughs> yeah. that's right. We had this discussion. It's the Michigan-Ohio conflict. That's the only thing that we have against each other, right? <laughs> it's not even that big a deal. But there's always that Michigan, Ohio kind of thing, but ah, that's fine. Yes, we both grew up in the, we, I mean, why do they call it the Midwest? I mean, I got, it seems like that should be just the mid, but they call it the Midwest. Right. With so we have that background, definitely. It is like I, nowhere near the West. <laughs> no, not at all, but that's what they, I always grew up, I live in the Midwest. No, you grew up in Michigan. That's not, that's kind of just the mid, I guess, I don't know. All right, I want to ask you a personal question, because this is just, I'm just curious. I've been married for 22 years, so I'm just going to ask you, as you've gotten older, and you're still a child, but as you've gotten older, now that you're dating again, I'm are, not, you, are you, you're not dating? Oh, no. Okay. Well, if you I'm, decided I'm not to. dating. I've been celibate for um, going on seven years. Wow. And it is really non-religious. I just um, want to protect my peace. <laughs> After you've been sure. married and yeah, you get a divorce... Yeah, yeah. Um, some people jump right back in, but I don't want to ever get divorced again. So, right. um, I never wanted to get divorced in the first place, but it was just, I couldn't help it. I, I needed to be able to live my best life and that didn't allow it. Even though financially yeah. we were good, you know, we got along sometimes, but it stifled me as a person, um, which made me miserable. <laughs> so, yeah. um, the question I was so going to ask you is, that if, well, if, if you decided to date, let's put it that way, are you going to find that you're going to have about this much of a, of a tolerance for people that have any sort of behavior to what you have already learned you don't want anymore? That is one of the things that stifles me from dating because the more, not educated, the more spiritually sound you have, the more emotional intelligence that you obtain the less you want to deal with people who are sporadic, who has drama. Um, I per, per, personally have Graves disease, which means um, I have Graves disease on top of post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and those two things, the symptoms are very similar. So my goal in life is to minimize my stress and, um, anything that seems like it's going to agitate me i am like oh no uh -uh, yeah, i'm okay you're gonna be single for a long time because trust well, me men are we're all stupid men are dumb i'm and willing to compromise um yeah. right now i'm not trying to get you hitched up or anything i'm just, <laughs> just trying. i mean listen mark <laughs> i'm not opposed to it okay <laughs> it's just that um, and, and I'm willing to work and grow every, with someone. Every, every guy out there is, is, is writing down your podcast right now. To get <laughs> Listen, I like to travel. Yeah. Um, I have children. So my goal in life is literally to be somebody that travels and help people yeah. like this for a living. Like, I just want to travel the world. I want to go to every place that jesus was supposed to be i want to go to the mayan ruins i want to go to the egyptian tombs i want to go and feel the energy and the presence in all of these places because i feel energy and i am yeah. a spiritual i'm more spiritual than i am human nowadays i believe and yeah, i just want to go and i want to travel and i want to experience so if there is a guy that's listening <laughs> He's he's out there. Maybe and because you're learning the lesson you learn, you're gonna you're gonna you're. I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> All right. Lastly, you and I. I just want to kind of preface this because I, I I didn't tell you I was gonna say this, but you and I talked a lot about a lot of things the other day, and I do please want to have you back on because um, hey, I th I think uh, I think you're an excellent guest, and, I, and there's just some topics that you and I are gonna talk about because you and I seem to be willing to be to talk about just about anything. 
And I love that. So I'm going to ask you. That's if you'll that come mid West. I mean the mid. <laughs> it may be. I just we just hit it off. I mean, you and I talked, and I'm just like, okay, this yeah, this was real real fast. I knew I wanted you on here. I know we went all over the place, but I'm definitely I'm telling my audience that I'm going to get her back on, guys, because. Um, in a few, I'll, I'll give you guys a break and get let you get everything. But um, I'm gonna have the team. We're gonna talk a little bit more. And I, when I when I'm hanging up with you, I'm gonna give people some uh, information on how they can find you, how they can find the, the TV, how they can find the um, you know your your different podcast. And um, I've got some stuff that you sent us that we're gonna be able to give them some links. So I'll show that to it. But um, I really appreciate your time and thanks for the the issues we were having tech, technologically and some of our glitches. I, like I said, I'm in Denver now. You're in Atlanta. I'm having a three degree day for whatever reason that was affecting things. So. Um, Super glad to have on here. Thank you so much, and um, I'm going to talk to you hopefully here real soon. I look forward to coming back. Um, I definitely enjoyed the conversation. I love talking to older and wise people because I relate more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm both of those things, definitely, Casey. (laughs) Mostly the older, let's just be frank, but... uh... Anyway. I mean, you have a lot of wisdom. You may not realize it, and people may not point it out to you, but I see it. Well, thank you. That's I, I really appreciate that. We, we try. I think it just comes with age. I think sometimes you start to figure out. I think I know a little bit about what I do. I've got a lot to learn about the rest of the world, but just, I seem to know a little bit about healthcare and healthcare staffing. So thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. We're going to see you again soon, and enjoy the, the rest of your day in, in sunny, warmer Atlanta, Georgia. Now it is sunny today, but it has been raining for like nonstop the last week. Uh, Honestly, I just came back from vacation. I went to Florida. Um, I needed a little break, but it's cold here. Yeah. I mean, not that cold, but it's, it's a cold. different cold. It's a different cold. It's dry here, but it's, I, I've been in I've been in Florida. I've been I went to, I went to Florida State. I think I told people I remember it snowed in Tallahassee one one time for a little dusting. So I get it. All right, you All take right, care, well, my it friend. It was nice speaking to you, and I look forward to being again. back on your show. All right, talk to you here soon. Well, like I said, <laughs> oops, sorry. Well, like I said, we were going to go everywhere, and, and we did. Um, yeah, I hope you guys see now why I wanted to have her on. Um, really interesting, fascinating, and again, I can't wait for some of the other episodes. we got some pretty controversial stuff she and I are willing to talk about with uh, hopefully uh, maybe just her and I, maybe even a panel of some people. I haven't done that yet, but I just rolling around my head about some panels of some things I think we need to talk about. But I cannot thank you enough, Dr. Casey. I can't thank her enough for joining me again today. I think this is uh, one of those episodes that really gets you thinking. And that was my whole, in- whole intention of this thing, was to get you thinking about yourself, self-improvement, how you deal with some things that are you know just hard for people like myself and, and even for Dr. Casey to understand what you guys go- do and see day in and day out. I mean, I just want to recognize that we both realize how tough that is. And hopefully our conversation today got you thinking about some things. And like I said, every time she said something, there was four or five things I want I could I, I wanted to jump on. But it's so hard um, when her brain goes so quickly and has so many different unique ideas. I want to slow it down and, and jump on it. So I hopefully we did a good a good uh, episode today and give it justice to what we were trying to uh, talk to you guys about and have you guys really start openly talking about amongst yourself, or at least thinking about. If this is a private thing for you, I totally get that. Maybe you can start thinking about these sorts of things and you know, take some of her advice and, and think about how to, again, start thinking about what's important to you, evolving yourself, paying attention to yourself, taking care of yourself so that you're mentally, physically better and stronger. Guys, as always, I cannot thank you enough for joining me today, and I will catch you guys next time on Travel Evolved. <laughs>